How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at Shut In, directed by Farron Blackburn and starring Naomi Watts and Oliver Platt. Watts plays Mary, a child psychologist and caregiver for her 18-year-old son, played by Charlie Heaton, who was paralyzed in a car accident, which also killed her husband. And the two of them live a relatively isolated life in rural Maine. One day, one of her patients, a little deaf boy named Tom, played by Jacob Tremblay, goes missing, and Mary starts seeing some really weird stuff and hearing strange noises throughout her house. Her doctor, played by Platt, tries to convince her that none of this is real, it's just her mind playing tricks on her, it's all in her head, and she's just really stressed out. But over time, it starts to get worse, and eventually Mary becomes convinced that the child, or perhaps the ghost of the child, is living in her home. And then it gets stupid. I got to attend a free screening of this movie the day before it was released, and boy am I glad I didn't pay money to see this. This was bad. Even Naomi Watts, talented though she may be, could not save this sack of shit. Oliver Platt, talented though he may be, could not save this. And man, both of them need to fire their agents, because they deserve so much better. I think what really clued me in that the movie I was watching was really going to suck came about 20 minutes in with the first jump scare. Mary starts hearing some strange noises coming from outside of her house, so she slowly makes her way out there to find the source of the noise. And when I say slowly, I mean I have seen snails move faster. And as she makes her way at a sub-snail's pace around the side of the house to the wood pile, I know exactly what's going to happen. Eventually, she's going to get up there and there's going to be this dramatic pause for effect, and then some cat or raccoon or something is going to jump out, timed with this painfully, abusively loud orchestral sting, and everyone's going to go, ah! And that's exactly what happens. Not only is it predictable as all hell, it's not fucking scary. It's annoying. And the movie does this more than once. And the other thing it does more than once are the dream sequence fakeouts. Something legitimately bad and scary and unsettling starts to happen, but then Mary wakes up and oh, it was all a dream. <laughs> Fuck you. That's pretty much the entire first half of the movie and it drags so much. And this movie is not very long. Like, I walked in the theater at 9 and I was afraid I'm gonna get home really late. I walk out of the theater and I'm like, it's only 10.30? Shit, that felt so fucking long. I thought it'd be midnight by now. Now, eventually it does start to pick up a little bit in the second half. Until the twist. Though I hesitate to call it a twist. It's really not much of a twist because I figured it out about 15 minutes into the movie. And I knew it wasn't gonna make any goddamn sense, and it didn't, but I figured there's no other direction they can possibly go. They have to go this way. And sure enough, they did. And before I go any further, I'm gonna throw up a spoiler warning, just in case anyone wants to avoid spoilers, if you for some reason want to see this movie, but really you shouldn't. So, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, here we go. So not only has the little boy Tom really been living inside her house and making strange noises at night, and no, it's not a ghost, he is still alive, but her son Stephen is not really paralyzed. He's been faking it for six months or however long the movie said it was. And somehow he managed to fool everyone for months, including his doctors. What? This is an actual line from the movie. When I woke up in the hospital, I didn't talk. I didn't move. Everyone just assumed I couldn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't fucking work that way. But there's a chain of events that eventually prompts Stephen to drop the charade. And basically, little Tom comes along and Mary takes a liking to him and wants to help him out. Plus, the father of one of Mary's other patients starts hitting on her. And she's also thinking about sending Stephen to some sort of a special care home because she doesn't think there's really anything else she can do for him at this point. Eventually, Stephen realizes it may not just be him and his mother alone in this house for the rest of their lives. So he puts his plan into action. And he straight up murders that 
that dude that was hitting on his mom and apparently tries to murder little Tom, but I guess the little guy is just too quick for him and is very good at fitting into crawl spaces. And he drugs his mother's tea, I guess, to try to convince her that she's really just hallucinating all the weird stuff that's going on in their house and how he manages to do all of this without being discovered. This kid is a fucking ninja. And when Steven finally comes clean and reveals all the horrible things he's been doing, his mother is still trying to convince him, no, Steven, you're a good boy. This isn't you, you're a good boy. And the really weird thing is, this is not the first time in the movie that she says something like this. When she's talking to the parents or legal guardians of some of her patients, it's like, your son's a good boy. Yeah, he's on the verge of getting expelled. Or, Tom's a good boy. He broke a kid's arm in class the other day. You know, lady, I'm starting to think you're not a very good psychologist. <laughs> I will at least give Charlie Heaton this much. His performance towards the end was actually pretty good. I legitimately thought this guy was batshit insane. In fact, all the performances are pretty good, honestly. And there are a few suspenseful moments towards the end, but overall the movie is just hampered by pointless jump scares and dream sequences and a story that is completely preposterous. According to IMDb, this is Christina Hodson's first screenplay. And for her sake, I hope she gets better. Because this was not good. If you're thinking about seeing this movie, don't. Just don't. Save your money. Spend it on something else. Go see Arrival. That's actually good. Or go see Doctor Strange again. When it comes out on DVD and you see it at Redbox, don't rent it. If it comes on TV, change the channel. Just, just don't bother. And that's all I got to say about Shut In. So until next time, take care.